Hi, uh, my name is Yusenica. Welcome to my casual YouTube channel. This is where I talk anything casual or monumental related to life. And today it just happens to be the long-awaited Barbie movie. Oh my gosh. I grew up watching so many of the animated Barbie movies, it's insane. <laughs> it's So this to me is just... I've been waiting for this <laughs> for a very long time. Barbie, I feel like, is so incredibly special because... Depending on the context, Barbie has really shaped a lot of great things in relation to not only femininity, but create creativity. Um, as much as there has been some harm done, you know, like in relation to body dysmorphia, setting unrealistic beauty standards, things like that. There also has been some amazing things in relation to the way that kids play, the way that kids think. The impact Barbie has had on me as a creative person, I don't even know if I can quantify at all. So I'm excited to see the Barbie movie because it's inspired me and has shaped a lot of young girls' views on creativity and like femininity in great ways as well as bad ways. But we're just going to focus on the great things about it. Um, yeah, I'm excited. You excited? She's excited, even though she doesn't even know what a movie is. She doesn't even know who I am. Anyway. <laughs> some of this just felt obnoxiously, I don't want to say feminist, ob there were some obnoxious themes of feminism and matriarchy versus patriarchy that didn't really sit well. Because it, it just felt like it was so overt that if you put it in more covert moments, it would be a little bit easier to digest. So I watched the movie. <laughs> So I watched the movie and I am conflicted as to how I am supposed to feel in the way that a, Var a Vulture article stated this kind of clearly and I really do appreciate this, but they said that while viewing the movie, you feel the need to grade it on a curved scale because we're all so excited for this movie. There's so much nostalgia attached to this um, and to Mattel themselves <laughs> that you feel the need to think of it as more fond of more as more fondly in your mind than the way that it actually like presented. So I'm struggling because I came into this movie really wanting to like it and thinking I was going to be blown away with how great it was. And there are some things that I find that were really really valuable in the film, okay? There are so many things that I agreed with in this film that still hit me, hit me like a wrong way and like rubbed me kind of like an uncomfortable way I don't know I I'm gonna get into all of my thoughts but before I'm gonna split I'm gonna split this video into a couple parts I'm splitting this video into my take on Barbie what I liked directly after my take and then um what I dislike so my take is essentially just like what the film what I took away from the film as a whole, the film story, what it meant to me. Um, just so you know, like, why I'm saying what I liked about it and what I didn't like about it. And just kind of like summarizing, I guess, the things that stood out to me. Alrighty, so we see Barbies in this idyllic land. Um, she just is in like her perfect Barbie dreamland because it's like Barbie's world. And she's living in her perfect little dream house. And we see her I loved the mannerisms of this film that's going to be in one of the lists of one of the things of the lists that I like uh is that I loved they that they incorporated Barbie's mannerisms and her feet being just perfectly arch and the fact that she didn't doesn't eat real food and she just glides down into her car loved oh my god loved all of that so then directly after we see her, her idyllic perfect life immediately we see that she's filled with intrusive thoughts existential dread and just like the smallest amount of cellulite like an incredibly small amount of cellulite i doubt that that was margot robbie's leg even like i feel like, i feel like greta was just like can we get somebody in here with cellulite for real because i <laughs> i don't think this woman houses houses any cell any of any speck of a cellulite <laughs> sorry sometimes i have to look at my notes um she then discovers that somebody's messing up her life and giving her all of these human feelings that are disrupting her perfect idyllic life and she finds out that in order to heal 
herself she must heal her human so that the human is not projecting onto her and then like causing this disruption in the world which is I guess what they called in the movie it, the portal's been opened but it's like <laughs> I don't know some some things in this movie just kind of feel like what the heck uh, but it's also that's another thing is what who was the audience for this because I always thought that it was going to be more so adult based and it is but I saw a lot of children in the theater and I almost felt uh, I felt almost a little bit bad for them because there's so many themes that were hit on that may have even been that were just a little bit too explicit that I felt like were chill were not children oriented but at the same time Barbie is such a is a children's toy I just don't know who the audience is for this but as an as an audience member who is watching this I'm like what the heck okay we also have Ken who's just generally undervalued in this society <laughs> he is made for a beach like not even like a lifeguard he's just beach you know what I mean um and the only thing that brings Ken value is just Barbie which makes a lot of sense because it's Barbie and Ken Barbie uh Ken was made for Barbie which is so interesting because there are some like there are some biblical themes I kind of feel like <laughs> are kind of intertwined into this but I think I'm just also very much searching for that I'm really digging when I'm like it's interesting how Ken was just made for Barbie because if you are like a biblical reader <laughs> you know that like that is very much in line with maybe the first book of the bible <laughs> anyway so Ken is just kind of feeling like he doesn't have much of a purpose outside of Barbie. Well, I mean, it doesn't, ex it doesn't explicitly say that at the beginning. It, obviously, at the end, it does. Uh, but uh, Barbie goes on this trip to find the person who heals or the person that she can heal. Uh, and then we find out that Barbie is having a hard time with being perceived in the real world. And she's dealing with, like, how to deal with emotions and She's never felt real emotions before because she's been in Barbie land where they don't need to have any of that and everything is like great and good. Um, so we see that she's having trouble with like walking down the beach uh, and people like openly judging her, which as a woman, oh my God, it is, like, it's nerve wracking walking anywhere. Honestly, it is like, as much as there are some things that are exaggerated in this movie, some themes of feminism that just are a little bit too explicit and a little bit too weird. Explicit in the way that it's like, okay, that could have been shown and not told. Uh, walking <laughs> as a person is just odd and weird. And I'm happy that they included your feelings on that because I believe, I, I think that if you just were never like a, a real person and you just walked on the street as an attractive person who's wearing a ridiculous outfit, you probably be feeling the same exact way that she's feeling. Anyway, I digress. So she walks down the street um, and is kind of struck with the full scope of being self-conscious as opposed to before being completely just admired. So Ken has a different experience because now he's dealing with the full scope of oh, I don't have to look at one person to admire me. All of these people can admire me. So Ken comes into the world <laughs> with uh, that thirst of attention being filled by multiple different people. And they both kind of go their separate ways. Barbie is focusing on her emotions, saying like, oh, I need to connect with my human to see what she's feeling. And then we see all of these like memories that are kind of flushing through her mind about this person. And as a... I was gonna say as a woman just as a, somebody watching this who's very emotional and tuned with their emotions I almost wanted to cry while she was going through this montage because it just felt so like personal to watch a little girl grow up and to be uh to go towards her mother and I just feel like those are very staple universal experiences that we see through Barbie's like memory of going back so Barbie is getting in touch with her emotions to figure out where he, her human is and then um I don't know if I should go straight to Ken yeah Ken <laughs> is moving throughout the world as realizing that oh my goodness we're in a patriarchy and he finds out what patriarchy is <laughs> and he finds a lot of value in what patriarchy is because he only comes from a matriarchy 
So for the first time, Ken feels like, oh my goodness, men are in charge. That means I can be in charge. That means I can have a semblance of power. So he gets very excited about that. And then um, Barbie goes, well not and then, I can't remember the order of events. Barbie goes to the high school or middle school, whatever school this is, to see her human. And she's like, it's me, Barbie, I'm your human. And then this chronically online, <laughs> just hormone riddled teenager is like, oh, you're Barbie? Let me inform you about all of the negative impacts you have had on society. And then we just see her rip into Barbie about all of the, I mean, like kind of real themes, but just like incredibly harsh <laughs> to like this random Barbie person. Uh, so then Barbie just kind of gets overwhelmed and flustered and she just has to leave and she's like, I don't understand what I'm doing wrong. And then Ken is just like, my goodness, men are so powerful here. I am inspired by that. And we see Barbie gets uh, dragged off by Mattel. And the whole Mattel thing is really interesting because it's like, how did Mattel sign off on being portrayed as just these really brainless, these brainless people who just are business, not business minded, but like money minded. Um, just like this uh this room full of men who just are focused on we need to do what's best for the company and not think about the human experience or the what you know like I just think it's so funny that they were portrayed in like such that way and it's like produced and like pr I'm pretty sure pretty much funded by Mattel so <laughs> to be portrayed like that is so fascinating to me but <laughs> so we then see um <laughs> Barbie gets rushed off by Mattel. Uh, Ken goes back and spreads patriarchy throughout Barbie Land, and Barbie Land goes to crap because Ken learned about what patriarchy is. And I'm pretty sure that Ken just told the other Kens, you guys, we can be in charge. <laughs> and um, we see Barbie go through her adventure of getting out of Mattel with um, the mom and the daughter, which is like, the mom and the daughter thing was valuable because it really does show all of the generations, you know, like uh, mother who's like in, I don't know, maybe 30s, 40s, I don't know. And then like teenager. And we saw the little girls at the beginning. But then we also see when Barbie's kind of running away. We do see um, Ruth Handler herself, which was really interesting. So I do like that Barbie shown a lot, have shown a light on the multiple generations and they and they did it through like a mom and a daughter which is very interesting either way um what was i saying before that i feel like i was talking about something actually valuable um let me go to my notes so yeah so my, my, the mattel scenes are just kind of like i felt like to add intrigue as to like oh no something bad's gonna happen with the head honchos but I mean they're all just kind of like I don't want to say himbos because they're not they're not himbos but they think like himbo nah they're just kind of empty-headed you know what I mean they're just empty-headed it's fine uh so they try to catch Barbie can't really catch Barbie Barbie goes back to Barbie land and realizes that patriarchy has taken over and we see that Ken has spread patriarchy because he feels generally undervalued and has only been doing it because he wants a semblance of power um and he feels as though barbie has failed him because barbie neglects him and doesn't want him <laughs> so then he just becomes this ruler of kendom <laughs> because kendom because he wanted to be in a position of power and he had that opportunity while barbie was gone and the movie just gets resolved basically I don't want to go through the whole entire ending the ending to me was kind of like odd I also missed a tiny bit of it because I used the bathroom which was so annoying I hate that um but the whole movie kind of ends in Barbie healing herself and a like pro feminist kind of awkward kind of cringy kind of real speech about how women people are too hard on women and women can't just be women we have to exist in a very specific way in order to be looked at as like successful or whatever um which like of course that speech was coming at some point and yeah Ken we realize that Ken is really just like a hurt human being who's searching for power 
um and barbie is struggling to deal with the fact that she's not the perfect stereotypical barbie she has to deal with the realism of intrusive thoughts and existential dread and um she's coping with that and decides to become a real person and yeah <laughs> very interesting very interesting plot i i <laughs> I don't even if somebody told me to rate this on a scale of one to ten I don't know where I would go I think I would go generally a little bit lower just because I appreciate the story and I appreciate a lot of factors of it but overall I just felt a sense of un just like discomfort you know what I mean um I don't know if it's because I was wanting to go into it kind of being like oh let me turn my brain off for like a little bit <laughs> but I don't know what I would rate out of 10, but here are the things that I liked about it and then the things that I didn't like about it. I loved, 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 loved the costume design, Barbie's mannerisms, the energy. The first part of the movie was so like fun and I even liked some of the humor, even though at some points it was a little cringy. Uh, I loved the end scene where she's like, I'd like to make an appointment for the OBGYN because <laughs> Barbie doesn't have a Gina. like she doesn't have a Gina. <laughs> uh, I liked I love I loved that they paid homage to the weird Barbies because there was always some random messed up weird Barbie somewhere and I really do appreciate that because because it added a sense of realism to this like completely weird idyllic land uh like it just felt like there were real themes from real life Barbie users <laughs> as opposed to like we're gonna talk about typical Barbie and Barbie's history whatever and we're just gonna add this little personal touch that everybody's aware of this weird Barbie that everybody plays <laughs> that everybody had to play with at some point um I liked the fact that there were themes of patriarchy and matriarchy in this because I liked that they were not ignored you could have easily made a Barbie movie where this was not hit on I've seen like pretty much most of the 42 Barbie animated movies that is not a topic ever discussed because it's like a, it's for children but I liked that it was hit on because a large contention point of what Barbie what makes Barbie controversial is that you know she's like this perfect tall slim for the most part in the beginning like a white figure you know like when you think of barbie you think of like a tall thin white figure um but we're getting kind of like into i guess in this movie you kind of get into the intersections of gender well that's kind of just it but like it's but that was like the main part and i think that's the only part that really should have been included is like the gender <laughs> um ideals that were being explored there are a lot of people that are going to be on this that are like annoyed at this movie because of the themes of gender because people don't like talking about uh, themes of feminism and people are going to be like this is all this it's about hating men and it's about it's about how men are the problem and it's it's a, it's just about uh, problems with how men have ruined society and it's 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 a man hating movie it's not about anything real this doesn't do anything for us it's just horrible it's like not this is not for men like you know what i mean like it's not gonna <laughs> there's some people who are not gonna think in depth about this and there are some men and women that are going to take this and take it as and boil it down to this is about women hating men and the themes of why uh men should be and women should be pin, pinned against each other and they're going to ignore the fact that ken brought up his feelings to barbie after he explored the idea of like patriarchy and power and brought up and was vulnerable with his feelings of i feel undervalued so i took power over you know um but yeah th there are going to be some people that are upset at those themes I'm not upset at them being hit on. I am more so, I just have a bone to pick. I don't even have a real bone to pick. I just am more so uncomfortable with how it was portrayed at certain times, you know? Like, there was a time where the daughter, when Barbie was giving her speech about how, like, I can be a fully formed Barbie. I can do blah, blah, blah. And she was, like, saying a bunch of things that were kind of intelligent and, I guess, woke for 
for Barbie land. Uh, but then the daughter was like, yes, white savior Barbie. And we were like, what? That, I I understand why that joke was made there, but it, it just didn't fit. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, the daughter is just so... And not, not that this is on the daughter's fault, this is on, I feel like, the writing of it, but it just felt like there were some elements of virtue signaling. And that's a lot of the criticism that people are putting on it, is that, like, it's very woke, it's very virtue signaling, it's very blah, blah, blah. Um, like, these, those were people that wanted to go to the theater who did turn their brain off, and they were like, what the heck is this woke stuff, you know? Um, but there were some moments where I felt like it was very valid for people to be like, this is weird. Um, just because... And it wouldn't be a Greta Gerwig film if we didn't discuss sexism in some way. But I feel like for her other films, like I was thinking about this while I was watching the movie, her her films in the past, some of the sexism does make sense to talk about explicitly. But I feel like for this one, there are some moments where I wish it would have been a little bit shown a little bit less overtly. You know, with the whole Ken thing being like, men are great, I love men, men rule the world, are you, have you not heard? Like, whatever. Um, and I get that, I get why he had to say it overtly because he just was processing it and he's Ken and it's, this is a Barbie movie and they had to put in child terms. <laughs> but at the same time, it's not a child, do yeah, it's not a child, child topic, right? I don't know. Uh, but basically there were just some themes where I was like, I feel like that could have been a little bit less overt. Like, especially... Her saying like yes white savior barbie it could have been like it's giving white savior barbie you know what i mean like it could have been like I, I don't know it just some part of it felt very much like the idea of white feminism that a lot of people critique already online which is the idea of a lot of feminists base valid like if there's validity to white to feminism in the way that you could say a lot of people place their identity in the fact that white feminists only view their problems as coming from feminism, um, coming from the idea that we're born into our gender roles and we're therefore less valued in society, sure. But then it's like, you as a Barbie figure, the stereotypical Barbie, you have little to no disadvantages so why is this whole film being made about oh my god I'm coming to discover my place in the world and it's uh in the real world versus like this world and I am grappling with that when it's like you you have I mean it's valid struggles but it's also just like there's so little there's I don't know they're just they, I didn't feel for her when she was like I'm just not as pretty or I'm not supreme core barbie I'm not blah 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 barbie I'm just barbie just felt weird you know what I mean like I don't know give Barbie a really really hard sob story then make me feel something through that but I don't know um that was just my feels <laughs> about it and what I didn't like um I'd say that I'm a feminist I have a video on my channel called get ready with me and talk about <laughs> why I think that God is a woman which is like kind of a joke kind of not kind of not <laughs> but some of this just felt obnoxiously uh I don't want to say feminist of there were some obnoxious themes of feminism and matriarchy versus patriarchy that didn't really sit well because it, it just felt like it was so overt that if you put it in more covert moments it would be a little bit easier to digest and that's all I have to say and I'm really happy that I could get it out that way because I don't know how I was gonna wrap that up on that uh, if you like this video, let me know. Give me a like, give me a comment, give me whatever. I post pretty much most times, three times a week. I give pop culture news, bachelorette recaps, and then whatever the heck I want for the third video every week for the most part. But yeah.